this could be the world's cleanest factory. It's at the cutting edge of human achievement, where technology meets the future. And it's constantly developing. If you cannot innovate, you will not survive in this industry. They take silicon, one of the world's most common materials, and stack billions of circuits and transistors on it. Their mission, to add billions more on chips that are always getting smaller. Every day you need to do something new. If not, you are falling behind. In a world where everything depends on computing power, tomorrow is being created right here inside this mega factory. Monday morning, peak time for water and power usage. It's critical. One glitch could spell disaster on the factory floor. We usually call it Starship. It's the place of the new building in the new building. It's basically the brain of the new building. It controls the whole building system, the electric system, the water system, the air system, or the chemical system. The captain of this Starship, Rex Lai, He's the one with all the responsibility, making sure the supplies are constant and reliable. In the building, there are more than 1,000 to 1,000 pieces. You can imagine that when there is a stop at the building, the whole building is broken. That is a very difficult thing to do in the building. It's more than challenging. A break in the building. It's more than challenging. A break in the building can cost millions. It places this energy center in a crucial role, safeguarding the lifeblood of this semiconductor giant. At the heart of the process, silicon, a substance that makes microchips possible. Sometimes it conducts electricity, sometimes it doesn't, depending on how a little electrical voltage is applied. Hence, it's called a semiconductor. Using semiconductor design, we usually call it semiconductor. Semiconductor is actually a function of opening the door. This semiconductor feature can be used in the number of ways. All signals are only used with 0 and 1 to express such a system. It may seem crazy, but basically a chip is just a lot of switches. Yet, it's way more complex than it appears. These microscopic switches are the basic components of all computing. Whatever you want your chip to do, it's the billions of transistors on board that make it possible. The more transistors there are, the more complex the computations possible, and the more your device can do. From communications, computing, medial health, and even military purposes, they are basically the brains of modern electronics. Taiwan punches above its weight when it comes to creating chips, not least thanks to its long experience and its geographical location. Taiwan is very strong in the production side. The raw materials are about 7% of the world's production. The advanced materials are about 9% of the world's production. The second part of the design and the test part are also the first in the world. 
ranged across three science parks, from the north to central and down to the south of Taiwan. There's a dense cluster of facilities built to serve every stage of chip production. Taken together, they make Taiwan the most significant producer of semiconductors in the world. Taiwan is the only location around the world that manufactures both the most leading-edge logic products and also leading-edge memory. So the leading-edge logic obviously is produced by TSMC and the leading-edge memory is by Micron. At the center of the cluster is Micron Technology, one of Taiwan's largest semiconductor manufacturers the company was founded in the USA, but it has also made itself a home in Taiwan, with a vast factory performing the bulk of its manufacturing. It's been here for nearly 30 years, and is one of the reasons why the island has become preeminent in semiconductor production. The scale and magnitude of micron manufacturing in Taiwan is just unparalleled. 25% of micron employees work in Taiwan and we produce 65% of the micron VM. The worldwide market share is about more than 10%. So Megafab is yes, but it doesn't, it's not an overnight work. This is the factory. One million square meters of production the size of 140 football pitches. The entire process takes place within these walls. From R&D through fabrication, assembly and testing, right through to sales. We have uh, two manufacturing plants, one in Taoyuan Guishan, the other one right here in Taichung Holy. I'm not going to tell you the, how much it is, but it's a mega factory. So. Zhong Lianbin has been working in semiconductor engineering for three decades. He's a perfectionist, and you have to be. He prides himself on getting everything right, down to the last detail. Semiconductor manufacturing, today it's involving more than 1,000 steps. And we are not talking about just getting one step correct. We are talking about getting all 1,000 over steps correctly line up to be able to have a functional chips. The first step is design, a monumental task, given that billions of transistors have to be fitted onto each tiny chip. Semiconductor design, it's actually developing the architecture for integrated circuits. So design is like kind of a building a skyscraper. Uh, architects and civil engineers that we discuss about the high level building plan, where to put the utilities, how to lay out the rooms. Once the design is complete, it's sent to the fabrication area otherwise known as the fab, where it will be made. Getting in is not a simple process. There is one enemy that can never be permitted to enter. Dust. Not one particle can be brought in. It's called gowning but it's not really a gown that they put on. They call it a bunny suit. But despite the funny name, it's one of the most vital pieces of equipment in the factory. It's designed to keep the dust, hairs, and skin particles we shed the whole time from polluting the pristine factory floor. Even the furniture in the gowning room is designed to maximize cleanliness. It's all made from stainless steel, right down to the benches and shoe racks. 
Once you're tucked safely inside your bunny suit, there's one more stage before you can finally enter the clean area. You need to take a special shower. Filtered air is blasted through dozens of vents, removing any particulates that might have made it this far. This is like a half a minute out of one million years. That's the amount of the control that we have to, in order for us to be able to have successful uh, wafer fabrications. The production line is a hundred times cleaner than any hospital operating room. But cleanliness is just a precondition. The work is yet to begin. The machines here are some of the world's most sophisticated. Without them, the technical advances made in the design rooms could not be made a reality. It all starts with a perfect, clean silicon wafer, 12 inches across. It's spun at high speed. A few drops of a UV-sensitive liquid are enough to coat the wafer evenly. And then, it's into the photolithography machine. It's a bit like the way photos used to be printed in a dark room, but in a machine costing a hundred million dollars and with the accuracy to match. 60 years ago, a transistor we are able to see using humans' uh, naked eyes. Today, the size is in fact like uh, almost 10,000 times uh, smaller than a human hair. That's huge amount of uh, innovations, uh, especially coming from photolithographies, in order for us to print or define such small patterns onto the wafers. Inside the machine, the wafer is exposed to UV light projected through a mask carrying the design like a film negative. This light optically prints the circuit design onto the wafer, causing exposed areas to solidify while unexposed ones are etched away. This process happens time and time again as the circuitry is built up in layers. And with the pathways in the circuits, measuring just a few nanometers, the tiniest bit of contamination could disrupt the entire production line. The staff may be in their bunny suits, but the best way to keep the chance of contamination to a minimum is to keep the people out. To do that, you need to automate whatever you can. Getting machines to move the wafers about the factory floor not only keeps humans away from them, but it also optimizes delivery efficiency. Loading machines take the printed wafers and place them in specialized containers. These containers are then hoisted up into little buggies running along overhead rails. With all this high-speed traffic, the little vehicles are covered in sensors so they can detect one another and regulate their speed if they get too close. There are thousands of them in this mega factory, and together they travel nearly 400,000 kilometers every day, the equivalent of circling the planet 10 times. The Altogether, there are thousands of huge machines on the factory floor. And as expensive and reliable as they are, they still need constant monitoring. 
Fortunately, for purposes of keeping out contamination, this can be done remotely by a remarkably small crew located at the far end of the factory. Wolf Chun is in charge of this crew. They have to make sure that the hundred or so processes inside the clean area are all running to plan. They have at their disposal over 50,000 sensors and 250 million control points. This results in an astonishing flow of data, reaching up to 30 petabytes every single day. You can after the wafers have been tested, 80% of the chip making work is done. But now, they meet their final challenge, to be transformed into usable components. Each wafer has had many chips printed onto it. Now they have to be separated. This is done by one of the oldest technologies in use here, cutting with diamond blades. The individual chips are extracted and placed one by one onto circuit boards. Next, they have to be connected up so that they can communicate with other components. Fine gold wire makes the connections, placed by yet more precision machines. A silicon wafer itself is very fragile. If there's any uh, humidity, any corrosions in the environment, it could damage the silicon chips. So the backend process will encapsulate this silicon chip so that it's able to protect against any kind of uh, environment damage as well as kind of a mechanical damage. Once in their familiar black protective casing, these chips are tested. Any that aren't up to scratch are weeded out. Then, all qualified parts are laser tagged so they can be readily identified. Now, they're ready to head out into the world and be put to use. This extraordinary process has undoubtedly changed the face of the world and will continue to do so as it is refined and continues to develop. But, as with everything, the benefits it brings come at a cost. 制成的复杂度不断的在上升，它可能呃过去可能不需要这么复杂的工序，现在需要更复杂的工序，所以要完成一个制成它所需要消耗的，好，这个不管是水啊、电啊，它它确实呃是呃更高的。Back in the starship, where the factory is kept running, Rex Lai and his team are attempting to mitigate the burden inevitably placed on the environment by the demands of such a mega factory. They're trying to achieve the same success with a range of other chemicals used in the chip-making process. What at 15% concentration 
would previously have been sent for incineration can at 80% head out for recycling. The factory uses more water than any other resource, a resource that is under increasing pressure worldwide. Clever treatment systems here at the factory reclaim nearly 80% of the water used, dramatically reducing consumption. These green walls help reduce the energy used to maintain the environment within the factory. And the use of renewable energy saves the equivalent of the power used by a small town. We only give out chips and nothing else, um, which means that we're trying to leave as a small environmental footprint as possible. You see the downside impact of the global warming, and we need to do our part, and we'll continue to do so in Taiwan as well. World of the Semiconductor, an exquisite fusion of art and science, where precision and ingenuity intertwine in an intricate dance. Thanks to the ceaseless innovation and round-the-clock manufacturing within these mega-factories, human civilization advances at light speed. So, the next time you send a text, snap a photo, or stream a video, remember the extraordinary journey that propels us into the future, one chip at a time.